Let's talk about how to train to lose weight versus how to train to gain muscle. Welcome to the Strong for Life podcast. If you're catching this live on YouTube or in the Strong for Life Facebook group, welcome. Good to see you again. If you're catching this as a podcast on any of the streaming platforms, Apple, Google, I guess it's YouTube now, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, any of those, thanks for tuning in. Uh, please take a moment to like, rate, review on whatever platform that is. That really does help us make this happen. Uh, and also send in any questions you have. Questions drive the show. Most of the topics we talk about are based on questions I get from my clients or from the Become Strong for Life Facebook group. So questions are good. Uh, always ha happy to have a discussion. Uh, and if you're tuning in for the first time, the Strong for Life podcast is designed for busy parents and professionals, people who are time poor, and don't have three hours to listen to some big interview. Uh, it's all about talking about individual topics, keeping it as concise as possible, and giving you either some good thinking points or good action points. Uh, and again, if you have anything in particular you want to talk about, let me know. We'll do a show on it, assuming it's appropriate. This is a family show, folks. Sort of. Uh, okay, so let's get into the top. Well, it's actually announcements. So this Saturday, it is Tuesday, 10 a.m. here in Hobart. And on Saturday, uh, I will pre be presenting at TEDx Hobart. So I'll be giving a short talk on how to eat like an adult. And I have a feeling it's going to challenge some people, maybe offend, maybe irritate. And those are all good things because it should be a talk that brings a call to action and makes you feel uncomfortable if you're not already taking the action, which is eating like an adult. Uh, I've done a few podcasts on that. Uh, I have the free Eat Like an Adult resource. You can get that on the website, strongforlife.online, or just shoot me a message on Instagram, Coach Josh Wood, uh, and I'll happily send that your way. So it's going to be good. It's a big event. We got some amazing speakers. We had rehearsal day yesterday. Uh, I got to stand on the stage with the overly bright lights shining in my eyes watch some of the other speakers hear some of their talks it's going to be awesome it's a big full day thing here in hobart uh, starts early finishes about dinner time it's going to be a blast if you've never been to a ted event or a tedx event i highly recommend you check them out uh, they have them all over the world lots of great speakers completely different topics you know this one is not health and fitness based i'm the only health based speaker we've got people talking about uh, fashion, about drone technology, about mountain climbing, about risk taking, all sorts of great stuff. Really cool, cool event. So if you aren't in Hobart and can't make that, that's too bad. But of course, all TED and TEDx videos go onto the YouTube page. So keep an eye out there. I will obviously announce when that video is out. Uh, it can take some time before that actually shows up on the YouTube channels. Anyhow, let's get into some quick tips on weight loss versus muscle gain. So there's a lot of misunderstanding around how to train for weight loss and muscle gain. Pretty much all of the training that you think is for muscle gain is going to help more for weight loss than what you traditionally think as weight loss training. Uh, and what I mean by that is you know, all the cardio and group fitness classes and bungee cord, BOSU ball, drumming, Zumba knockoff classes. That stuff's not great for weight loss. It's great for making you tired and giving you an, a, social, a social thing to do during the day. Uh, but it is, is not great for weight loss. Whereas the resistance training, the gym work, that we typically think of as bodybuilding or muscle building training uh, is actually fantastic for weight loss. But if we break things down into the most basic elements, to lose weight, you have to expend more energy than you consume. Uh, this can be done purely with diet. If you're just trying to lose weight, mostly body fat or whatever weight you can get off you, then you have to there is absolutely no way around this. You have to expend more energy than you consume. That's it. You have to give your body a reason 
to tap into your fat stores. Fat is just stored energy. Bodies store it for emergencies. And if you can't convince your body that it's a big enough emergency to use your stored fuel, you cannot lose weight, which is why you have to eat at a deficit. And that can be because you're eating less food or because you're exercising more. And there are certain forms of exercise that lend themselves to better long-term fuel use. If you're doing general cardio uh, or a hit class, you know, hit, hit's a little bit different if you're doing a real hit. So high intensity interval training, most people don't don't do that properly. They they do an hour long aerobics class and call it hit, but it's not. You know, a true hit is very short. If if a, if a hit class goes for more than sort of 20, 30 minutes, it's it's not hit. It's just long duration circuit cardio. Uh, but basically, all of your your Zumba, social dance, cardio, aerobic style classes, uh, they burn a, a, an okay amount of energy right then and there, but they have little long-term burn. Whereas, and this is uh, what we call uh, post-exercise oxygen consumption. That's how we measure the increased metabolism post-exercise, how much extra oxygen your body needs. Uh, and those, those types of activities don't increase your metabolism very much beyond the class itself. Now, if you're doing resistance training, strength, it doesn't have to be in the gym by yourself. You can do it with friends. You can do it in a class. There are good strength group classes too. But if you're doing proper resistance training with weights and pushing the intensity enough, you will have increased oxygen consumption or you will have increased metabolism or increased uh, energy burn, they all more or less mean the same thing, for anywhere up to 48 to 72 hours later. So instead of just burning the amount of energy that you're burning in an hour, which is about as much as a donut and a half for most people, uh, that will continue to burn longer because you're using more energy for recovery. So resistance training, weight training, uh, whether it's bands, whether it's TRX, whether it's body weight only, whether it's dumbbells, barbells, machines, it doesn't matter. If you're doing a good hard session there, it's going to give you potentially up to three days of increased energy burn, increased metabolism, increased oxygen demand. And that's really what breaks into more fat stores, as long as you're not then over consuming to make up for that. Not only that, as you build muscle, your engine gets bigger. Muscle is incredibly metabolically demanding. The more muscle you have, the more energy you burn. Sitting there, sleeping, you burn more energy. So when you build more muscle, you build a bigger engine. And as you build muscle, you increase your short-term metabolic needs during that recovery process. So the trick of it is the secret to losing weight is to gain muscle. It's not losing weight versus gaining muscle. It's gaining muscle to lose weight. That's the most efficient way. Now, things are a little different if you are in a weight class-based sport because you can only gain so much muscle uh, because it's heavy. Muscle is dense. Uh, and myself, I have <laughs> I've got a TED, TED Talk this weekend, and then the next weekend I have a jiu-jitsu tournament. Uh, and so I'll be competing in that and I had to drop to uh, 73 and a half kilos so that's the maximum weight and I normally walk around it's sort of 77 77 78 ish uh, I did up until a couple months ago when I was like oh I'm just gonna drop down uh, and that's been tough <laughs> I don't have a lot of extra weight normally uh, and I'm very lean now uh, because because of dropping that extra sort of five kilos uh, and I definitely think I'm going to go up weight class next time, but it was a good challenge. It was a good test. But when you're in body weight specific sports or sorry, like uh, weight category sports, whether it's weightlifting, whether it's jujitsu, boxing, whatever, you can only add so much to your frame and get so lean before you max out. So it's a slightly different story. But for the average person, if you want to lose body fat, the best way to do that is to do the type of exercise 
that gives you the longest increased energy burn and makes your engine more expensive. Makes a bigger engine that requires more energy to maintain while you're sleeping, and that's gaining muscle. We're not going to get too much into the nutrition side of stuff because that is, of course, something we talk about quite a bit and something I will continue to talk about. But how do we gain muscle then? So basically, if you want to gain muscle, if you want to increase the size of your muscle, then you need to put resistance on your muscles. And you can use any implement you want, body weight, bands, TRX, dumbbells, barbells, machines work just fine. Resistance is resistance. Your body doesn't know where the resistance is coming from, but you need to put enough resistance through the muscles that you're trying to grow to bring them very close to fatigue. You need to exhaust them regularly, and then you need to fuel in a way that gives you an excess of fuel so that your body can then grow new tissue. New tissue is expensive. New tissue is expensive to build. It takes a lot of energy, especially muscle. Now, if you're fairly new to training, there is a process called body recomposition, which means you are simultaneously losing fat and your body is using some of that energy that it's using from the fat, using some of that energy to build new tissue, to build muscle. That's recomposition, losing fat, gaining muscle simultaneously. Uh, that's often when we don't see a large amount of scale change. So weight on the scale doesn't change a lot, but we see a lot of changes in how you look and how you feel, and how you perform, and how your clothes fit. Your size changes, your proportions change, you become more muscular while losing fat. As you become more advanced in your training age, and I do have a video on YouTube about training age that breaks it down, but essentially training age is how well and how quickly and regularly you adapt to training. When you're new to training, uh, you adapt quickly and you make progress regularly. The longer you've been training, the lower amount of progress you make the less progress you make consistently and over time it's harder to make progress so the more advanced your training age the less you can recomp which means in general you're going to be going through some form of bulk cut and it doesn't have to be you know become obese and then cut off weight to see the muscle underneath it just means you're going to need to be in surplus for a while and then you need to shed off a little bit of fat for a while and then you go back into surplus until you're happy and then you maintain more or less. Uh, so recomp is one of those things that doesn't happen a lot, but you need to fuel for muscle growth, and that's another topic entirely. But in terms of stimulus, you need to put the muscles that you want to grow under a stimulus that takes them close to fatigue so that they have a reason to get bigger and stronger, because your body will see that as a threat and will then create more tissue so that it can deal with that threat better in the future. And that means taking things close to failure. And so we measure intensity usually for what we call hypertrophy training. So hypertrophy training is muscle building. Uh, it's different than strength training, but hypertrophy training is also called bodybuilding training. But anyway, so we're trying to build muscle. We take the muscles to a certain level of fatigue to stimulate growth. We measure that fatigue or we measure that intensity using usually one of two scales. We have reps in reserve, RIR, and we have rating of perceived exertion, RPE. And typically I'll use RPE for strength stuff, and I'll use RIR, reps in reserve, for hypertrophy work because hypertrophy is, you know, we try to make you as tired as possible, create a lot of fatigue in the muscles because. That fatigue is just basically a proxy for other things happening in the tissue. So reps and reserve is a way of doing what we call auto-regulation and measuring how close to failure you are. So auto-regulation means that you are judging your intensity based on how you're feeling at that time. So when you're working out using whatever resist resistance you want, you want to train to within three repetitions of failure almost consistently generally one to two reps, two and one reps in reserve uh, is a good place to go most of the time, depending on your training age and how well you recover. To measure reps in reserve, the easiest way to do that is just take a set 
of whatever exercise, say push-ups, to absolute failure. Do it until you can't do another push-up. That is RIR zero. Zero in reserve. That's max. That's failure. And then take that number, and for another couple sets, just go to two in reserve or one in reserve. Take it to almost failure. But once you understand what it feels like to fail on an exercise, it's much easier to judge your intensity because you can go, oh, this is, yep, probably two or three reps away. It's about all I got left in the tank, and then I'm done. And so take most of your resistance training to that level, to at least within three reps in reserve, almost three reps to failure, and do that consistently over time. And then rest and recover. And that's how you build muscle. And you know what? That's also how you lose fat, because building muscle helps you lose fat. And now we've come full circle. So key concepts, understanding muscle building, understanding what it takes to lose fat, understanding how to train for hypertrophy or building muscle, and then understanding terms like auto-regulation, reps in reserve, and rating of perceived exertion. Now, if these are all things that sound complicated, uh, it's because they are, <laughs> but I'm trying to make them simple as best I can. Uh, but it does take some time. I have a few videos on YouTube. You can head over to the, the channel. Oh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, it's on my channel. I have videos explaining reps and reserve and rating of perceived exertion in more detail. They're in my coaching breakdowns playlist. I've got a lot of stuff in there on how to do different exercises and coaching terms. But if you need some help, obviously I'm available for one-on-one -on -one coaching. But the Strong for Life Members Vault is now open. And the Members Vault is the ultimate fitness resource. I am putting tons and tons of programs on there and health and nutrition tips and systems and it's an online subscription library where you can go in on your phone and pick a program and follow it through and have another program lined up with instructions and videos on how to do everything along with how to set your macros and use our um, calorie calculator on there and get everything set up to live the life you want and get the body you want all self-guided all available without contract as long as you want it. So check that out, Strong for Life Members Vault on strongforlife.online. There should be a link in the description here as well. But if you got any questions, hit me up. I hope that was not too confusing and at least a little bit helpful. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have questions. See you next week.